as depressing as it is and as you know really repulsive and and a danger i think because i was thinking what what are the analogs to turkey's sort of you know sanctimonious uh kind of narcissistic lack of any sort of ability to kind of self-assess and i could see it in the united states and i could also see it in israel frankly uh you know like there is this commonality of kind of far-right governance uh which on a deeper structure if we get rid of like oh well you know the clash of christian muslim and jewish we can find like deeper global patterns um i mean and of course we could actually expand mm -hmm. them out and say like okay what right. is a pattern from you know turkey to trump to modi to putin obviously and that's i think a broader uh, conversation that's worth having um but you know as i guess as far as the sort of like lack of self-assessment we're always aggrieved and under danger i mean israel's always a top contender for that award right uh, and yeah and i think that you know trump's move on jerusalem can be read as you know as simple as uh, the Mueller thing, whatever it's going to disclose, and I don't think, as I always say, I think it's you know it's much more Goodfellas than Manchurian Candidate, but it's not going to look good. Um, <laughs> I think he's getting ready to fire Mueller, uh, and I think that there's just some element of like, hey, you know what? What? When does it hurt to stoke your crazy base? Uh, and right. this is a move right. for the crazy base in Israel. Right. Same thing. Israel's governed by the you know, the extreme far right and the population gets more and more bigoted and xenophobic and out of control by the day. Uh, but on the other hand, right. I mean, does this just sort of the United States has obviously always had a biased policy uh, and it has been, in fact, very pro and very easy on Israel. But there were, you know, from the kind of. <laughs> deeply unfortunate anti-Semitism, George H.W. Bush's, uh, you know, Jim, Jim Baker's, screw the Jews, they don't vote for us anyways, to... I think, the, it, was, I think it was F the Jews, actually. Right, F the Jews. Oh, the Jews. You cleaned it up, this is a family program. Yeah, excuse me, well, yeah, we'll wait till the fun half, then I'll do my impression of uh, Jim Baker at a... Uh, at a uh, West Bank brothel. No, but uh, <laughs> the, the, no, but then, and then, you know, I think, frankly, the delusion of John Kerry, uh, you know, hoping to hold Israel accountable and, you know, because obviously that, you know, I mean, not to editorialize too much, but I mean, at least obviously for who governs Israel, the ship is totally sailed. And of course, they're like, yes, we're going to have an unending, you know, occupation and an unequal society. I mean, that's just obvious policy wise. But I mean, there's the stoking the, the respective bases and then is there just sort of like formalizing like yes america from you know center left to center is pro israel and the right is uh, you know not only pro israel just joined at the hip with the most far right elements of israeli leadership and right. that's just how it is yeah well i i i think i think that that's right uh the although i have to say I found it very, very hard to get all spun up about this Jerusalem thing because yeah. this is just, it, it was just acknowledging what, I mean, any objective observer of the situation would, would conclude, which is that the United States um, mm -hmm. supports the Israeli position on a variety of issues and has engaged in, you know, uh, diplomacy, in, I think, very much in good faith, but I think that the expectation was always uh, that the United States was going to support an Israeli position. And I think Trump just basically forced the issue. The, the idea, and, and I think a lot of the commentary, both on the right and the left, is defective because it presupposes a peace process that doesn't actually exist. Right. Or, and it presupposes a two-state solution that doesn't actually right. exist. Right. So, you know, you have this crazy logic on the on the on the you know very pro Israel right end of the spectrum, which is you know this if if you just break some dishes and you demonstrate to the Palestinians in the Arab world that Jerusalem actually is Israel's capital, it will force them to negotiate. I don't understand that logic, but that is essentially what's being uh, articulated. On the left, it is oh my God, the sky is going to fall. Mm. There's gonna, violence is going to sweep through the region. When in fact, I think you know. The Arab world much more cynical about this, and although there were protests 
in the West Bank, about 5,000, relatively small, larger in other places, Yemen, Tunisia. The Egyptian government wouldn't even, you know, let five right. people stand together on this issue. So, but, so there was a lot of, there was a lot of force applied to people to prevent them from negotiating. But I also think a lot of people in the Arab world shrugged their shoulders and said, well, tell me something I don't know. Right. You know, that the United States supports it. I, I'm, I'm going to write a piece about this, and I'm going to start with an anecdote going back to 1997. I was living in Ramallah, and I would go to Jerusalem, and I remember I was hanging out at Damascus Gate, and there was this big, you know, Israeli lefty protest about, you know, sharing the city and so on and so forth. And I was sitting with some Palestinian kids, and I started chit-chatting with them, and I was like, so, you know, what's the deal, guys? Is it going to be two capitals or one? And they're like, oh, no, 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 one capital. I was like, oh, capital of Palestine? They're like, no, what are you talking about? Capital of Israel. Hmm. And so, like, you know, 20 years ago, these these Shabab, these 14 and 15-year-olds, they understood what was happening. So I have right. to believe that the, the wider Arab world did as well. So yeah, the and problem I mean, with it right. strikes me is that it, in order to feed these bases, it's provoking uh it unnecessarily it doesn't do anything to advance american interests there's no there's no upside to it whatsoever for the united states so i, I it, to me it's just it's purely a political move and, and a craven one at that well there's no difference between me and the country so in a certain sense so <laughs> hi folks sam cedar here we still need your help on our patreon page YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.